I've recently added a Nissan Leaf to my fleet. So this being an electric vehicle is from 2015. The pack has degraded. So I've got about eight health bars on this Leaf where 12 was brand new. So the battery capacity isn't all quite there, but I can make it to here at the warehouse, 12 miles back home and even make it back to the warehouse again. Of course, if I do that, I'm probably stuck at the warehouse until I can charge. So I did go ahead and get myself some solar setup so that I can keep this battery down here charged and just in case I need to dump some power into the leaf I can and I know some people are gonna be like well why don't you just plug into the warehouse you've got the warehouse I could I could bring my 120 volt trickle charger here and and use that to get a little bit of power into the battery but this being a warehouse it wasn't built to have uh, lots of loads in it so like this whole like 8,000 square foot warehouse is fed by one or two 20 amp circuits. Um, that might even be 15 amps. So very little capacity there to be charging an EV. And of course I do solar, so of course I'm gonna do this instead. So this is an EG4 6,000 XP. This thing is a 6,000 watt split phase off-grid inverter. So off-grid being that it can pull from the grid to power things, it can pull from the battery to power things, and it can pull from the solar panels mix all those together as you've got it set and feed you know a breaker panel now don't mind my ac wiring i realize that this is like on wood where it really should be you know backer board or something cement or spaced away it's on a pallet it's out here in the parking lot most of the time and and my electrical is probably not to code i'm sure it's not i've got you know conduit just hanging out here but the the concept is there this uh battery is pretty slick because it's so simple and includes so many of the things you need to set it up. So it's got a big positive bus bar and a big negative bus bar, and then it's got its communications ports. Um, you can see that I've got this set to battery one because there's just one battery. You can see that I do have two negatives here and two positives here. The only reason for that is two of them, of course, go up to the inverter. Now I did have to crimp lugs on the end of that side, um, but these side come with the quick connects already attached. Uh, I added a couple of bus bars here inside the conduit box, which by the way, I think is fantastic to have this conduit box with a lockable latch to be able to just keep all this, you know, out of little fingers ways. And the deal is now you can run your AC to your conduit box, you can run your solar out here. Um, and for me, I had to add this little solar charge controller. Now, why did I do that? Because this has a solar charge controller built in, right? Well, the deal is that solar charger controller is too good. What do I mean by that? You have to be at at least 120 volts to be able to get that thing to fire up and actually start charging. Each of these panels is like 49 volts open circuit. So even with two in series, you know, I'm hitting 50 volts open circuit, more like 80 volts in nice cool weather under max under load. So I'd need like three, really four of these panels to be able to do that. And that would not fit on my pallet. So design constraint. So I went ahead and added the small charge controller so that my solar panels are feeding through this over to straight to the battery. So when you're looking at the monitoring, you can see that the battery is being charged, but it's not being charged by the inverter. Now this thing has two solar inputs that you can feed, you know, it can charge at like 4,000 watts a piece into each of the solar inputs. You can put 10 kilowatts of solar onto this thing, which I think is fantastic. And of course it's got all the built-in breakers. If you're seeing this, you've probably seen the 6,000 XP before, but you've got the 200 amp battery breaker. You've got the breaker out to the loads, which would be my little breaker panel there, um, in from the grid, and then also in from generator. Hopefully, hopefully that in from generator is going to accept AC coupled solar panels here in the near future, but it's not released in firmware yet. So not a thing yet. Another thing that you get with these is the Wi-Fi adapter actually comes with it. It's not super hard to set up. It actually sets up rather nicely. Um, when you're setting up the inverter, it asks you who your like vendor is. You can put signature in there for signature solar. Um, that allows them to be able to get access to your device if need to, to tweak with settings or troubleshoot with you and whatnot. Um, but really cool, really cool setup. Why is it a cool setup? Because it's simple and you can just follow the directions and have mm, that. I didn't quite follow the directions as I mentioned earlier because I've got it mounted straight to wood. Um, but you can see how it could be really simple to do. Now the battery is like 280 pounds. So, you know, helper probably required for that. 
we ended up using some leverage and uh, did cheat with the forklift just a little bit, but you know, it's here, so why not? Um, so for me, of course, I have my uh, fast charger here. So I've just got this single 240 volt outlet off of here. Something to note, um, if you're looking at getting a dedicated solar EV charger, you'll probably be tempted to look at the 240 volt inverters that don't have a neutral. Uh, you'll see these a lot with like the Palmister brands or a lot of things on Amazon. You'll be like, oh, that inverter is really cheap. You know, that's a five kilowatt inverter for 400 bucks. Got a solar charge controller built in. Don't be tempted because the thing is it doesn't have a neutral. And guess what? Even though my car charges off of 240 volts, this charger here will not fire up and give a ready light unless it's got a neutral. So watch out for that. You do actually need a split phase or a transformer or something to get that center tap neutral in order to get things correct. Now I believe that this also requires like proper grounding or a ground neutral bond. Um, I actually didn't have a problem here, so probably by default this 6000 XP has a ground neutral bond inside because I believe that's pretty standard with EV chargers is to make sure that there's a ground neutral bond. Um, but yeah, I mean, I've got this and today I went ahead and dumped the 40% from my battery into my car. So now I'm up at like a 95% state of charge. One day I'd like to expand it a little bit. If I really need some energy out of it, I can plug my 2.4 kilowatts into it. And especially on a day like today, I'd top my car off no problem. But of course I use that array for powering my laptop and lights. And when it's super hot in here, I've got a little air conditioner that I blow on myself. So, you know, what do I want? Do I want to be able to get home in my car or uh, run my AC? Which is really only a problem if I'm like running an errand from here because I've got power at the house. I've got solar at the house and it's free power at night. So I can plug in and have it charge at night and not worry about it. It's just one of those things where it's like, if I forget or if I have to run an errand while I'm here and I end up running my battery low, it's just, you know, it just gives me a little bit more freedom and having an electric vehicle that's used um, with not as much range as perhaps it used to have. <laughs>